my goodness gracious, next year, 2019, could possibly be one of the biggest box office years in cinematic history. Why is this? I'll tell you why. Disney, Buena Vista, is not releasing two, three, five, but ten films next year, and each of them seem like a juggernaut. So with this one, I'm going to go through all the releases next year, talk about the ones I'm most excited to see, talk about the ones that I think is going to make the most, all the way to the bottom. I'm going to rank all these films in order from one to ten, which I think is going to make the most. So will one film, two films, three films make two billion dollars, or all of them? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I want to thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Just My Opinion. I really do appreciate it. So I'm really, really, really excited to talk about this right here. Uh, as Disney controls all of our imaginations, as they, you know, manipulate us to give us their do give them our dollars at the box office. Um, I'm kidding, but you know, we have all these films right here and, you know, I, I have a list right here. I have my reasons why I feel a certain film will make more compared to just popularity box office from years ago. And um, with some of this, this is a toss up. So we have 10 films we uh, that are coming out next year. We have uh, Captain Marvel comes out March um, 8th, 2019. Dumbo, March 29th. Penguins, Disney Nature, that's a documentary, uh, April the 17th, Avengers 4, it says May 3rd, but they may move it up to a week uh, a week previous like they did with Avengers Infinity War, so it can release around the world day to date, you know, all at the same time, that's what that means. Uh, they did that, you know, just for spoilers for one, and um, it's just, you know, easier to track the box office. After that, we have Aladdin coming out May 24th, so I believe that is Memorial Day weekend, which is usually a slot the 20th Century Fox takes. Um, and then in uh, June 21st, we have Toy Story 4, uh, July 19th, my birthday, hold up, going to be 35 in this thing. Uh, we got The Lion King and Artemis Fowl comes out uh, the next month, August 9th, 2019 in uh, Frozen 2. November 22nd and Star Wars Episode 9, December 20th of 2019. So starting in March, we have a Disney movie coming out every um, month of next year, except for September and October. So they are really just hogging all the box office, um, you know, receipts and things like that. Uh, I also noticed I'm pretty happy with the release schedule as well uh when you have big 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 box big blockbusters you don't want them to be too close to each other like they did this year with uh avengers infinity war uh deadpool 2 and solo a star wars story i, I like that disney moved this um avengers infinity war up but they should have put solo in august and then since 20th century fox should have put deadpool to a memorial day weekend but you know they didn't want to listen to me i made a video about this last year but they didn't want to listen to me no i'm joking but um i um some of these i'm pretty confident on some of these I have no idea. So I don't know. I don't I don't even know which one I want to do. Do I want to list the one I think is going to make the most next year? Or no, we're going to start at number 10. So now coming in at number 10 um, is Disney. Is Disney. Is <laughs> Is Penguins, uh, Disney Nature. Now, I am not too familiar with all of their other um, previous documentary films when they cover animals around the world or whatever they do cover. I think I've only seen one, um, but that is just not a particular, uh, you know, film property or attachment, IP, whatever, that I see people clobbering over and clamoring over and just like, oh my God, I got to get to the theater. Did you reserve the tickets, babe? We got to go see Disney Nature. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hating on it. not saying this crap. You know, I just don't think people are highly anticipating that. So I'm just going to leave that at number 10. But coming in at number nine is a film that I reacted to recently on my channel. Please subscribe and go check that out. And that is Artemis Fowl. Now, but prior to this trailer coming out, I have never heard of this film before. Apparently, it is based off a series of books that a lot of my nice subscribers, thank you so much, let me know down in the comment section below for that reaction review video. And um, I don't even remember what it's about, to be honest with you, the trailer. It looks like it's going to be some magic and things like that, which is cool. I like magic. And then, you know, you had this little boy. You had this black dude in there that was looking like the grown-up version of Cisco. 
uh, with the silver hair. Whatever happened to him, man? He made good music to me. But uh, this film, Artisan's File, I, I really don't know what it's about. You know, a young Irish criminal mastermind kidnaps Frey, uh leprechaun officer Holly Short for ransom to find, I can't read, to find the search for his missing father in order to rescue his family fortune. So uh, it could be good. But I, uh, in my reaction video, I put that that's going to be down there with the wrinkle in time. Um, I don't know. I'm just comparing those films. But hopefully um, it does well. I'll have no stake in it. But anyway, coming in at number eight is Dumbo 2019. Now, I'm a big fan of Dumbo. Dumbo's been around for, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 years, maybe longer than that. I don't know, but he's been around for a while. Um, in 1941, the film made $950,000. Uh, is If you wanted to adjust for inflation for that, I have no idea how to do that. I imagine it will make a little bit more um, you know, next year in 2019. Now, it is going to be directed by Tim Burton, uh, who... I like, uh, he's a little overrated in my opinion. Uh, you know, if you disagree with that, hey, let's talk about it down in the comments section. Uh, but Tim uh, Burton, he is an auteur. Um, you know, we go all the way back to the 90s, you know what I'm saying, when he directed uh, Edward Scissorhands. I believe he directed that film. If not, I just embarrassed myself. Well, not really, but wait, wait, did he? Let me, let me check real quick. I'm pretty, oh, snap, wait a minute. Yeah, he did direct. I was about to say, I'm, I thought I was going crazy. Of course, he did Beetlejuice, Batman, Batman Returns, and all that good stuff. And I was, a, I was a fan of him more back in the day than I am today. But uh, I'm gonna put num I'm gonna put Dumbo at um, number eight. Coming in at number seven, you may be surprised where I'm putting this thing, uh, this film right here, because you know I would possibly be biased with the content. It is a Marvel film, Avengers Four. I think is going to be coming in at number seven. No, I'm just joking, guys. Uh, Captain Marvel. The trailer just dropped the other day with Brie Larson. The trailer, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of. Well, I don't even want to say mixed reaction. I think that a lot of people. Um, disliked the trailer more than liked it. Uh, I mean, they may still be interested in seeing the movie, but I saw a lot of comments and conversations and things like that of people just saying, yeah, you know, I was underwhelmed or I was whelmed or I liked the first trailer better or the second trailer kind of seemed just like the first trailer. And I will agree with that in my reaction video. Please subscribe and go check it out. I did say, um, in that video, uh, actually, I forgot what I said in that video. No, I didn't forget what I was saying. I like, I know I got excited towards the end of the video or the end of the trailer where she kind of powered up like Super Saiyan when she goes binary and she's flying around and shooting all the ships and things like that. That did look cool. Um, I, I, I did, I, I loved all that. It looked badass. Um, and, uh, you know, it looked good to me. I did say in the, in the reaction review video that it, it does look good to me. And it really does look good to me. But I will say, you know, going back, it does kind of feel like the same of the first trailer. They just kind of expanded scenes. Like, you know, I really don't. I mean, I see. I, and I think it's different for me because I know a little bit more about Captain Marvel. So I can kind of like fill in the gaps. But anyone that has no idea what it's about, I can kind of understand like why they're just not anticipating the film. But it's a Marvel comic. It's a Marvel brand. And, you know, Marvel has been killing the game in the past 10 years. So, um, you know, I still think it's going to do well. I think it's going to do over uh, Dumbo. Uh, I'm going to put that. Um, I think I think uh, Dumbo is going to make 700 million. I'm going to write 700 million. And we can all come back to this at the uh, a year from now and come back and see how right or wrong I was. I think Captain Marvel has potential to make. Uh, I mean, it is a female superhero, so the ladies will come out to see it. I'm going to put it at 800 million. I'm going to put it at 800 million. I know, I'm, I, I know Wonder Woman made around that much, and, um, you know, Wonder Woman is much more popular than Captain Marvel by, uh, um, a lot of years more popular. However, Captain Marvel does have the Marvel brand behind it. And Avengers 4 comes out two months after Captain Marvel. And so I would think that Marvel would be smart with their marketing and have a whole bunch of Captain Marvel in the trailer. You know, but at the same time, I do like the way that Marvel is Marvel Studios, excuse me, is um, marketing and directing their films. 
it seems sometimes not much more as a business and a, a project that they love. If you go back to like the first few years of them, you can kind of tell that, you know, I mean, it all it all is a business decision, but, you know, it, it would trump the creative process, you know, which, um, you know, led to a lot of directors leaving and, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. But, you know, I'm going to put Captain Marvel number seven and making around eight hundred million dollars coming in at number six. Uh, is Aladdin one of my favorites? One of my most favorite Disney films, um, animated films. Um, it's I like it. Uh, I, well, I don't want to tell you which one I like a little bit more than that, unless you saw that trailer reaction video because it's in this video I'm making now. But the original Aladdin came out in 1992. Uh, at that time, it made 504 uh, million dollars. Uh, if I had to guess, if you would address, if you would adjust for inflation, that would possibly be around one billion dollars today. Um, the reason why I know that, and I'm trying to make that educated guess is another movie that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And I'll come back to this. I don't want to ruin it for you right here, but I love Aladdin. Uh, Will Smith is coming through as the genie. I think that's a great choice. Of course, uh, we all possibly would like Robin Williams to come back, but you know, rest in peace, my brother, he's not here anymore. Um, you know, so Will Smith is the next best choice. You know, I think Aladdin is by far it may not be the most popular disney animated film but i think it's in that top three you know um you know with with other properties and so uh with aladdin i'm i think aladdin's gonna make now mind you when i'm saying all these films what they're gonna make i am you know with the mindset that it's gonna meet our expectations uh people do have high expectations for this film as do i uh it may not exceed our expectations but i, I if they meet our expectations Excuse me. I'm going to put Aladdin at one point four billion dollars, one point four billion dollars. And I'm also the reason why, because I'm just comparing it to other films as well uh, that are Disney um, that have made around this amount, uh, you know, in the past. Also, just a good staple for me, uh, the Jungle Book that was directed by Jon Favreau, uh, which came out, I think, in 2016. The remake, let me double, yeah, 2016, that film made 900, it was amazing to me, it made $966 million worldwide, okay, so tickets are a little bit more expensive than they were, uh, to, than they were two years ago, but not much, but let's just go, basically go ahead and round it up to a billion dollars. I think it's safe to say that Aladdin is a much more popular property than The Jungle Book. You may disagree with me. That's fine. Let me know in the comments. But I think it's across the board. Aladdin is more popular than the Jungle Book. So if Aladdin meets expectations like the Jungle Book did, at least I'm pretty sure that Aladdin is going to make more than Jungle Book here at this one billion to be exactly 966 million. So I'm just going to say and I'm kind of rounding down. I'm being generous. I'm being modest or whatever. Uh, not modest, but um, yeah, 1.4 billion for Aladdin is what I think it's going to make. All right, coming in at number five, and this was a little bit of struggle for me, is Toy Story 4. Now, I am nervous that they're going, that they're making a Toy Story 4 because all three of these films are perfect. I consider Toy Story to be the number, the best tr movie trilogy of all time. Not animated films of all time, animated and live action. I think it's better than the Dark Knight trilogy. I think it's better than the Captain America trilogy. I think it's better than the Godfather trilogy. Well, the Godfather was Godfather three perfect. One or two were, but was Godfather three? Well, you know, may not be perfect, but I think you get what I'm saying. But uh, Toy Story three, seriously, all three of those films are a perfect ten. So I really just don't want them to ruin that track record. But you know, hey, um, the same amount of the same people that made the film are going to be behind part four. And Toy Story, the first one, not the first one, but third one in theaters, it came out in 2010, so eight years ago, my goodness, it made $1 billion, $1 billion, $66 million worldwide. That was eight years ago. So if you adjust for inflation, I mean, me being, you know, conservative with this little bit holding back, that at least turned into like maybe 1.1, .1, well, not 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, I don't know. You know, all the pe all the experts in that arena help me out. But Toy Story 4, it has the chance of making $2 billion. 
Will it? Most likely not. But, you know, we've been surprised before. No one in the world knew the Fast 7 was going to make $1.5 billion. Granted, it was due to circumstances of Paul Walker passing. Rest in peace, my brother. You know, Fast 8 made 1.2. No one in the world knew that Venom was going to make $840 million. As at the time I'm recording this, I think Venom is like at $840 million worldwide. So you have these films here, um, you know, that have great potential that have already proved themselves in the past. I wouldn't bet on it, but at the same time, I would not be surprised if Toy Story 4 crossed that $2 billion mark. The film would have to be perfect. I mean, the film would have to be as good as all the other Toy Stories. The marketing campaign needs to just knock it out the park. Likely, no, uh, but it does have a chance given the property, you know, because, you know, these films make grown men cry. I cried in Toy Story 3, so coming in at number five is Toy Story 4. Coming in at number four is a film that I honestly don't give a crap about. I did not like the first film, but it made a buttload of money. I remember when I, re I remember I saw it early, uh, a little bit early, and I reviewed it, and I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a fart in the wind. No one is going to, you know, check this movie out. And it ended up making $1.2 billion worldwide in 2013, and that is Frozen. Again, I, I just did not like, care for that movie. I was highly disappointed. Uh, but it made a lot of money and children of these days are still singing, let it go and all that good stuff. So Frozen 2 comes out next year. Like I said, it made 1.2 billion in 2013. That film, I don't think it's going to make two, I don't think it's going to make $2 billion. I, I don't, it has a chance, but I just don't think it will make 2 billion. Um, so why the hell did I put it before Toy Story 4 then? I don't know. I guess I just changed my mind. So, hmm. Do I want to leave it there? I guess when I say I don't want it to, I mean, I don't think it is. I, I, it has a chance. I guess I just don't want it to. <laughs> I guess I'm being a hater on Frozen 2 or whatever. So I'll leave it at number four. Coming in at number three um, is a film franchise that's starting to frustrate the hell out of me. Because, uh, again, it has so much potential. But that is going to be Star... Or, excuse me, that's going to be Star Wars Episode Nine. Now, of course, in 2015 with... Uh, I was going to say A New Hope. With The Force Awakens, it made $2 billion, barely. But that's fine. And then The Last Jedi made $1.3 billion. So, um, I still think it's going to be number three. Does it have a chance to make $2 billion? You know, maybe. I'm not, I wouldn't bet on it. But... You know, the last film made, I mean, the first film made $2 billion. The next film made $1.3. If, you know, they approve on a lot of mistakes and it's just a bad, a great, badass film, a great film. I'm going to say Star Wars Episode Nine has, is going to make somewhere between $1.6 to $1.7 billion. That is if it meets our expectations. We can't be walking out the theater it was okay. It was cool. You know, I liked it. You were like, man, that's what? When they came up with the lightsaber, true. Oh, bro, for real? You know, it, the conversations have to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I saw that one and I, I liked it. Oh, really? You know, you, these top, these, this, this is the tone, the inflections, and the conversations that have to go on, you know, for this to, you know, for it to hit that. But, all right, guys. We have the final two left, okay? We have Avengers 4, and we have The Lion King. We have The Lion King, and we have Avengers 4. And I don't know why this means The Lion King, but anyway. Which one is going to come first? And I've been back and forth with this so much, and I really don't know, guys. It is really a toss-up, you know what I'm saying? Both of these films are, going if it meets our expectations, both of these films are going to make um, $2 billion. I just don't see how it can't, uh, especially with Avengers 4. I mean, if Avengers 4 is as good as Avengers Infinity War, it's a no-brainer to me. It is going to make $2 billion. Now, if Avengers 4 is not as good as Avengers Infinity War, kind of like um, Age of Ultron wasn't as good as the first Avengers in 2012, then it won't. If it exceeds our expectations for damn sure. If, if Avengers 4 exceeds, I, like, okay, our expectations... Or through the roof for Avengers 4. It is possibly one of the most anticipated movies of all time. 
Okay, if it meets our expectations, of course, I'm going to be a happy camper. You know what I'm saying? But if it exceeds our expectations, like meets all of our expectations, and then just goes like, oh, my God, that's so much. It has a potential to make be a $3 billion film. You know what I'm saying? You can call me crazy. B, what the hell are you talking about? No. Uh, I know Avatar is at 2.7. But, uh, you know, th to make movies like this, okay, that... Um, generate this amount of money one thing is in common they are films for everybody titanic see and, and i hear people talking about well only four films have made the two billion dollar club you got uh avatar you have um titanic uh avengers infinity war and star wars you really can't count titanic to be honest with you it made and originally in 97 was it 97 or 95 I think I'm going to go with 97. But in 1997, it didn't make uh, $2 billion. It made $1.8 billion, which is still freaking fantastic. I'm not you know, trying to discredit it. But in April of 2012, it got the 3D re-release. And so that's what bumped it up to uh, $2.1 billion. But I, I digress. I'm getting on my point. Uh, what I was trying to say is... Movies, if you want a movie to make a two billion dollars at the very least, or one thing I comment I've noticed is the films are for everybody, for all audiences. Titanic is for all audiences, Avatar is for all audiences. Uh, Avengers possibly could be, it's you know, bringing in new audiences, but that is one thing that is important that James Cameron, who directed um, and wrote Titanic and uh, Avatar. But both of those films, uh, Titanic and uh, not Titanic, The Lion King and Avengers 4 both have the capacity to, to I, I, I just I, I I'm feel real confident. I'm 95 percent sure they're going to make two billion dollars. Um, the Lion King, I'll go ahead and say I put the Lion King at number two and then I put uh, Avengers 4 at number one uh, in 1994. The original Lion King and made nine hundred and sixty eight billion dollars. Um, so that's right there at a billion. Um, you know, if you adjust for inflation, if you adjust for inflation alone in the domestic in the United States, but you don't adjust for inflation internationally, I really don't know how it works internationally. Um, it, it made a killing. But if, if you no, know, if you adjust for inflation for United States combining it with the international, it'll come out to like one point four billion. So domestically. So worldwide, Lion King 1994, it made $968 million. Okay. Domestically, it made $422 uh, million. Okay. So when I go to, when I'm on Box Office Mojo right now, I believe The Lion King is in the top 39 films uh, worldwide. Let me look for uh, The Jungle Book. No, um, The Lion King, where are you? The Lion King is number 19 if you're just for inflation at $814 million. So, where's my cursor? Let me pull out my calculator real quick. Uh, 814. And what was the um, the international? 545. Was that 1.3 just off the top of my head? Yeah, that's one. That'll be 1 billion. If, if you adjust for inflation today. Okay, so I'm just, uh, if you adjust for inflation today, just for domestic and you include international, that's $1.3 billion right there. So if you adjust for inflation too for international, I'm assuming that's going to be like $1.5, $1.6 billion. So I'm pretty convinced that The Lion King is going to make $2 billion. Uh, if it's the bit, one of the, if everybody just coming out crying and just like, oh my God, it was so damn good. It was 9.5 out of 10. It was a 10 out of 10. I love this Lion King better than the original that came out of 94. It does have the potential to make $3 billion. I don't care what you say. You can call me crazy. I mean, we can talk about it. I mean, you know, but I, it, it has the potential to do that I, i'm sorry it just does two bit to me two billion dollars is just a given with the lion king i mean it's just that popular i mean everybody loves the dang film uh, we're going over the numbers i'm not just grabbing this album out the air but you know so again coming in at number one guys the avengers 4 okay the first one came out in 2012 made 1.5 billion avengers age of voltron came out 2015 made 1.4 it was a disappointment avengers infinity war made two billion dollars okay the, this they've already the Russo brothers Joe and Anthony Russo Kevin Feige everybody at uh, Marvel they've all confirmed and just saying like look this movie is is going to be way bigger than uh, Avengers four if Avengers four meets my expectations I know me personally 
I will go see the film at least five to six times in the theaters. That's if it meets my expectations, like fully meets. Because look, Black Panther did meet my expectations. And I saw that in the theater four times. And Avengers Infinity War did not meet my expectations. I saw that in the theater like three or four times. When I say it, I still love those films. They was damn good. But I'm going to say meet my expectations. What I mean is like the film is damn near perfect to me. I don't really have any nitpicks at all or any gripes any gripes any criticisms i had criticisms and gripes for black both black panther both for uh affinity war and a ton of other movies so that's the important thing meets expectations um man of steel m met my expectations with that action at the end um you know you'd be like man of steel where'd it come from but um yeah avengers 4 um when the hell is this trailer gonna come out, man? It was supposed to come out, you know, Wednesday, but you know, um, they were trying to observe the, um, you know, George H. Uh, w. Bush passing away. Rumors are that this is gonna be coming out Friday morning. Spider Man Homecoming trailer coming out Saturday morning or Saturday. So we're just gonna have to see, guys. But that is just my list, my rundown of Disney 2019. It's gonna be a crazy year. Billions of dollars are going to be made. Bottles are going to be pop. People are going to be dancing. Strippers are going to get jobs and audit. And I'm teasing all the good stuff. Um, this is going to be a crazy year. So let me just run down this again. Coming in at number 10 is going to be Disney's uh, Nature Penguins. Number nine is Artemis Fowl. Number eight is Dumbo. Number uh, seven is Captain Marvel. Number six is Aladdin. Number five is Toy Story 4. Um, number four. Wait, number five is Toy Story 4. Number four is Frozen 2. Number three is Star Wars Episode 9. Uh, number two is The Lion King. And number one is Avengers 4. So, guys, that is just my opinion for the box office bonanza that Disney has in store for us in 2019 uh, as they control our imagination. Um, now, um, what did you think about everything I said? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or you disagree with me? Please let me know down in the comment section below. Let's punch numbers. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. That's cool. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review. Actually, this is not a review. I'm just used to saying that. Just to my opinion of the Disney box office bonanza of 2019. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.